Welcome to this tutorial brought to you by River City Graphics. Today I'm going to be giving you an intro to cameras within After Effects. So to get started we're going to open up After Effects and I've already set up a little bit for us so that we can save some time. Um, basically I created new solids um, with a gray, red, green, and blue. So if you don't know how to do that just go up to layer, new, solid, and make it comp size. So basically I have four of these set up and what we're going to be doing today um, is just kind of setting up a little scene and then playing around with some of the camera options within After Effects. So in order to set up our scene I'm just going to turn all of these layers into 3D layers. So I'm just going to take and click on this little cube box here to set them all to 3D and if you don't see that you can take and toggle switches to find that little box. So once you click on all those um, these will now be 3D layers. So what we can do is basically go into them, and I'm just going to start with the gray one. So I'm going to turn off all the other ones. And I'm going to hit R for rotate, and then I'm just going to rotate it along the x-axis so that it'll basically be rotating down. And this is kind of be going to be our little floor plane, and so we can just kind of scale this. You can use either these arrows or you can use the numbers down here in order to set up your scene. So basically I'm just going to adjust the x uh, and then I'm just going to scale it down or move it down and then I'm going to hit the S key and I'm just going to scale it up a little bit so now we kind of have a floor plane for our stuff to sit on. Okay, so I'm just going to actually move this forward a little bit and then what I'm going to do is take and turn on my other three layers. I'm going to select all of them. I'm going to hit S and we're going to scale those down. So now I'm scaling all of them at once because I selected them all and then basically what I can do now is just click on each one individually and move them around. So we need to kind of bring them forward in space so I'm going to select them all again hit position and we'll bring them forward using Z and then I can just kind of take and space them out so you can see we have green we have blue and we have red. Alright so now you can see all of those. Now again um, once I get into the camera stuff it's going to be easier to see those. Alright, so basically what I'm going to do is now show you how you can toggle different views within um, After Effects. So the way that you can do this is down here on your main composition window you can see that you have where it says active camera. This is basically um, what your default is. This is what you look at normally. Um, if you're not doing stuff like this, it's just main, your main default camera. Now you can also set it to front which is pretty much the same as the uh, active camera. Maybe a little different but it's pretty much the same thing. Um, you can set it to left so then you get uh, a view of this is our gray plane right there, that diagonal line and then these are our other three um, that we have there. You can set it to top so now we can see uh, from above and actually I'm going to adjust it while we're in this. So basically we're looking at our scene from above. So if this is the front and this is the top then basically these lines right here, this one line is all three of our planes. So if we kind of want to mess around with this you can see I can just grab that little blue arrow and move these around. Now when you go over it, basically let me zoom in here, you can see this is what I'm grabbing in order to move those things around in 3D space. There is another one underneath here, it's the Y, um, but you also have X and you have Z. So whenever you hover over one of the arrows, it'll show you exactly which axis you're moving. So now um, you can, and whenever you click off, you'll get a, um, basically it'll turn into a line. So you can see it's not there right there, but if you click off, it will turn into a line so you can see exactly where they're at. So now if we take and go back to our active camera, you can see that it's kind of changed our scene around there and now you can see we have some depth in between those because they're not now all on the same 3D plane. They're kind of back in space um, offset from each other. So if we want we can actually take and go back to that top view and really space these out so that you guys can get a good idea of what exactly we're doing during this tutorial. So I'm just going to take and move these like that. We'll grab the green one and we'll move it over here Okay, and we can take the red one and move it up front. Alright, so again, going back to our active camera, this is now what it looks like. So you can see that you can really mess around with your scene um, just by changing the view um, because it would be hard to get this, or it wouldn't necessarily be hard, but it would be harder to get this, uh, this look without actually changing views and just doing it all from the active camera. Alright, so now what you can actually do is create your own camera. So basically we've been using the default camera in After Effects, this active and these kind of different views uh, on our scene. But what you can actually do is create your own camera by taking going up to layer, new, and then down to camera. 
Now, pretty much once this uh, dialog box comes up, you'll see just a ton of different options, and I'm not going to get into these options today because each one does its own separate thing, and you can kind of match it to your footage and the camera that you're using and all kinds of stuff depending on what exactly you want. Um, what I am going to change is if you're on a two node camera make sure you're on one node and we'll just keep the preset at 50 millimeter. Alright so just the other stuff I'm just gonna leave with their defaults and so I'm gonna click OK and you'll see it adds a camera to our scene. So basically um, what we can do now is if I go to um, the active camera and scroll down you can see that now we have all kinds of different views um, we have or well not all kinds of different views but we have a new view which is camera one so if we select that nothing changes because the camera um, is basically a copy of the active camera so if we go to the top and we click on our camera so if you're on something else make sure you click on it you can now see that we have a camera added to our scene so Basically, in order to make um, this useful to us when we actually move the camera around or do anything with the camera, we need to see um, what exactly the camera is looking at, and we need to be able to see it also from a different view, such as the top. So in order to do this, you can take and go next to the list that we've been using, where it says one view, probably for you right now, and go down and click on two views horizontal. So your mind may have just been blown because most people probably don't know that that's there unless they've used these cameras before. Um, so now basically what we can do is set two different cameras. We have the active camera, which is what our camera is seeing, um, and then we have, which we can actually set to camera one now. So on this one we have camera one, and in this view we have the top view where we can actually move the camera around. So I can actually take this and I can just move the position of our camera so I can take this and move it back in space and you can see as I move it over here on the right you can see the little triangle moving around there um, it's actually updating on that one on the left so you can kind of see exactly what you've got going on there alright so along with this um, I wanted to state that you do have a couple other camera options if you're in uh, these modes you can go down to custom view which is which is kind of off the screen right now uh, custom view ones you can kind of get a side like diagonal look at your thing and you can also take and when you're on one of the cameras you can go up to the camera tool which um, you have quite a few you have a unified camera tool you have orbit camera you have track x y and you have z so you can kind of pan these uh, around by using the z it only it restrains it to the z um, the other one will restrain it in the other way and in here you can use the orbit camera to kind of orbit your camera around you can see over here exactly what that's doing where your camera's kind of um, just panning around the scene so uh, from its point of access. So I'm just going to set that back uh, how it was. Um, those are useful. Um, I would recommend just playing around with them. It takes a little bit to get used to them but uh, they can be helpful. Alright so now let's actually do something here. So what we're going to do um, is just kind of animate like a little zoom which our camera seems to be not where it's supposed to be. Okay it's back. So just undo if you start getting crazy camera movement. Um, you can undo out of pretty much everything. So what we're going to do is just kind of animate our camera to zoom out. So right now we're pretty far away. We'll, we'll make it a more dramatic zoom so we have it all the way out here. And we can set a keyframe. So I'm animating the position. If you don't already have that up, click on your camera and hit P and you can animate the position. So I'm animating that Z um, basically number. And so I'm just going to go out to one second and we want it to just zoom in right there onto our stuff. And we can you can see if you actually make it go all the way through it will change color because we're actually running through it in 3D space. But we'll just kind of run it up so that we get no uh, black at the bottom there. So now you can see if we hit the space bar we're kind of panning in on things. Now if you're building a complex scene or you're using 3D objects and you've got 3D stuff going on in here um, like not just planes but like really cool 3D stuff that you made in probably an external program and brought in you can see how you can get some really cool um, camera movement within here um, if you don't want to do that in a 3D program. So um, one thing I wanted to mention, if we were in the top view and I hit the space bar to preview, um, you can see that it's not really doing anything. Um, if we zoom out you can probably see it over here. You can see it's actually showing what is happening over there, um, but since we're not actually looking at camera one, make sure you select that side and then preview it so that you get the preview that you want. Um, that's one of the things that I it took me a little bit to figure out. I was like, wait, I'm hitting spacebar. Why am I not seeing it? It's working over here. You have to make sure that this one's selected. So just a little pro tip there. All right, so one more thing that I wanted to um, explain to you guys. I'm just going to run it back to active camera, or just camera one and just one view, so that 
and we'll go to camera one and zoom in here. All right, so basically what we have um, when you add a camera is that you have additional options besides just the transform. So if you take and click on your camera and click a little triangle to get more options, um, you'll be able to see that right underneath your transform stuff you have this camera options um, set of options basically. So if you scroll down you can see that you have zoom, you have depth of field, uh, focal distance, aperture, and blur level. Now if we wanted to animate our zoom um, we could have done it through here which may have been a better idea um, but I just kind of wanted to show you that you can also animate it based on the position and rotation and all that um, just like you would animate anything else traditionally. So you can um, affect it in that way. You can also turn on depth of field, which I think is a pretty cool um, thing. If you don't know what depth of field is, basically it's the idea that things that are further away from the camera will be blurrier um, than things that are close to the camera. So basically if you adjust this focal distance, so you turn depth of field on and then adjust the focal distance, um, you can see if we really turn this down, everything gets blurry. But then at a certain point, we're going to find that the red is pretty much in focus, maybe a little bit more. And you can see that the blue one back here is definitely blurrier. So you're kind of getting some depth of field. Um, if you've seen some of those pro pictures taken with like a DSLR camera, a lot of the times if you have your aperture, um, your f-stop set up to a higher or to a lower uh, number, then you'll see the background blurred out and you'll see the thing that's in the foreground basically really nice and crisp and it kind of gives you that. Um, artistic effect within your stuff. So you can also simulate that with an After Effects. So again, you can change the aperture in order to do that, um, as well as just the focal distance. So you can see that kind of gives you a similar effect. And then blur level, you can just play around with that too. That kind of um, is a way to adjust those other um, settings. So basically, um, that's all I wanted to talk to you guys about today. Um, I think I've probably given you enough to play with if you haven't used this before. I just kind of wanted to give you an intro to cameras um, because there's a lot to deal with and there's a lot to play with. Um, so I definitely recommend that you open up After Effects if you haven't and check that out because um, it can really be a cool way um, to get stuff done. This layering effect like this um, that we created. Uh, I've seen in like VFX breakdowns for TV shows, um, I've seen them take and layer stuff like this in After Effects, like they show their After Effects comp and they've layered it and they've get, they're getting these like ridiculously cool sets for TV shows just in After Effects, like they didn't actually make that. So, so this definitely is a practical thing that you guys should play with um, if you're interested. So I hope you guys learned something in this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and comment. And I'll see you next week with a new video tutorial. Thanks for watching.